In this video, we're going to use the Eddie Kramer drums plugin from Waves to take this drum track from this to this. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. We're also going to analyze the Eddie Kramer drums plugin, take a look at the differences between these different profiles here. But first, let's take a look at the interface. So right up top, we have meter in, meter out. Put this kick on solo for now. Right now we have this on bypass. Turn it on, meter the output of the plugin here, or the input of the kick in this case. Then we have our sensitivity. In general, we want to get this around the yellow. Now keep in mind, whenever we raise things like compression, treble, and bass, that's gonna change uh, what we're pulling in here, okay? So aim for yellow. It's absolutely fine to hit red or to be in the green, just whatever sounds best. But in general, we're gonna go up to around yellow. All right, we'll start there. Now, if we look over here, you see BD, we're on the bass drum module of this single drums plugin. So all of these drums plugins, all of these different you know, modules with inside of this drums plugin, you can see right here. So we just had the single, you know, Eddie Kramer drum plugin in stereo or mono. We're using the stereo version here, okay? There's not a separate plugin for bass drum, a separate plugin for snare, a separate plugin for hi-hat. All of that is within one plugin. You'll load that plugin on the proper track. So in this case, we're going to do the kick. We're going to load it across all of these tracks here in a minute, but then you'll choose the proper drum that corresponds uh, to the track you're currently working on. So we're on bass drum, right? Now, one thing to note, if I say raise this bass up here, and I just want to test this with a different profile, and I choose snare, that's going to take me to the default setting for snare. And I go back to bass drum. Well, I lost my setting. Not a big deal, we really only have like seven controls at most to operate here, but it's worth noting that, okay? Also, if you come up here to, to uh, load for your presets, we don't have any presets. Again, not a big deal. We at most have seven controls. So you might wanna save presets if you're gonna be switching between your profiles, which of course, click save, save to new file. And you can uh, save that just like you can in any other Waves plugin. So again, kick drum, Bass drum selected here. If I switch to say snare, it sounds way different, right? Go to hi-hat, sounds way different. Toms, way different, right? That's because there's different compression and EQ settings, which we're gonna analyze here uh, in a minute, right? We're gonna do that next, actually. Each of these different profiles or these different drum types have different settings for what we are actually adjusting right, depending on what we have selected. But first, again, let's head back to the bass drum. Let's go ahead and get this mixed. All right, real quick, real easy. Compress it, pull it down, hear that, pull it up, hear that. Of course, with a higher like this, you can see we're getting into the red. I don't like that sound anyway, I'm gonna pull it down a bit, reducing the overall dynamic range there. We have a gate here, now this track is fairly clean, as you can see. I don't have a ton of bleed or anything like that uh, coming through here, but you can still hear this pretty well. Right? The gate clamps down pretty quick there, right? Pull it up. We're getting more of that ambient room noise, so to speak, in there, right? So just adjust that to wherever you like, okay? Move on here, we have the effects knob, pull that way up. More of that again, that roomy, a little bit of reverberation in that. I don't like a lot of that for this. Just adjust it to taste. Good enough for me. Now our treble, we have zero to five for our settings here. Default is three, let's go through uh, these here real quick. Pull it way down. All right, way up. Really clicky there, it doesn't work at all for this. Put this in context. Too clicky, right?
So for this, I think somewhere between two and three. I'm gonna put it on three for now. Move on to the bass, pull this down. I'm gonna solo this again. It's bass all the way down, pull it way up. Now for this kick, of course, this depends on the exact kick you have recorded. If there's more bass in it, you may not need to push the bass this hard, but for that power, uh, I need to pull this up to around four or five. So I'm gonna put it on four, let me bypass. Okay, right back on. More power there. Okay, so guess what? We've pretty much mixed this drum here. Of course, you would want to mix this in the context of everything here, right? But that's basically all you have to do to use these Eddie Kramer plugins. Then we have the output. So obviously that's going to be the total output uh, of this uh, plugin. Down or up. And what we can do, let me actually bypass this here. Just get an idea of the level. Turn this back on. I'm gonna try to match this level. That's pretty close. Just using the mouse wheel there with this button selected, this knob selected, use the mouse wheel there to really adjust that pretty easily there. So that sounds pretty close. So again, bypass it. Okay. Turn it on. Yeah, huge, huge difference. Okay. Now before we hear this in the context of the mix, we have a little bit of mixing to actually do on the drums here uh, without the plugin. Now I've already done some mixing here, as you can see, our toms, I've already panned those. I've already panned our hi-hat over, okay? And of course, our kick and snare are going right down the middle. Yes, this is a stereo channel, so being that the snare is coming down the middle anyway, in this case, I want everything uh, full left, right, because that center image is still coming right down the middle. I'm not gonna get into that here. Don't worry about that. So let's go ahead and adjust some of these levels here. I'm gonna focus on these room and overhead mics. So the overhead, pull it down a bit. This compressed channel, way too much of that in there. Pull that down a bit. Here's the room channel, just wanna hear it. I don't want a ton of room in this. And then a compressed stereo channel. Don't want a lot of this, I'll pull it way down. Just to add a little bit. Okay, so our toms are a bit bit high here, right? Just grab this section right there. Okay, let's pull these down. Pretty close. Down a little more here. Okay. Pretty close. Again, keep in mind we're going to have, you know, plugins on this uh, as well. It's going to boost the overall uh, level there. So that's pretty good. All right, bypass this. And pull it on. Very good. I'm gonna pull that output up again. All right, much better. We're gonna adjust all these levels later on, but we have the kick done. And that's again is the basics of using this plugin. So now let's move on and actually analyze this plugin and see what it's doing. Then we'll go ahead and finish our mix. So let's come down here. Now, right now on the master, just so you know, I do have the L3LL Ultra Maximizer again from Waves on my master bus. The reason I have this is not really to affect the sound, it's so I'm not clipping for the video sound. So just an example, I'll bypass here, play back. Okay, turn it on. You're not really hearing any difference, right? So it's not really affecting the sound. It's just, just keeping me uh, from clipping. So let's open up our emo generator, which I already have loaded on this track here. Hit my target there. The Kramer drums plugin. Make sure my target is checked and our PAZ analyzer. And this is the exact signal chain. First our generator, then the plugin, and then the readout. Let's turn all of these on. I'll keep that on bypass for now. Turn on that. Now we don't really need to hear this, so I'm gonna pull down the master. So now we have our generator generating some pink noise. We could do 
you know, white noise or sine wave, but I want pink noise. It gives me a pretty straight uh, frequency response there. And right now, just, just take a look at that line. Let me bypass this and turn it back on. So take a look at that. So we're going to start here at the bass drum uh, setting here in our Eddie Kramer drums plugin. And I'm going to turn it on and look here at what happens to this analyzer. Ready? Boom. Immediately, we saw a boost here around 4,000. Pretty wide bell. And a dip here somewhere between 125 and about 750 or so. All right, so let's look at what this does. Obviously, sensitivity. I'm going to pull that in more so we can see. Compression, you can see what that does. Pulls it all together. Reduces the dynamic range, right? See that there? Now, the gate, you're not going to really see much of, but we can pull it way down here. And you can see that's reducing the overall noise. You can hear this more if I pull up our output here. It's going to be annoying, I know. Pull the gate back up. Really coming through. Gate down. It's clipping off. You know, sound under this uh, threshold there. All right. Now up to the treble. This is where things start to get interesting once we start switching through our different drum types here in this plugin. So again, we're on the bass drum. Look here at what happens way up in this area. Whenever I adjust our treble knob down to zero. Boom, you see that right there? Let me actually pull this gate up here. So now it's set on zero. Take a look at that profile. Pull it all the way up to five. You can see that boost. Almost, It almost looks like a shelf, right? Almost like that. So you can see how it really pulls this up. And we have a dip down here. So we can see exactly what's happening here. Now as I come down, it's not raising it quite as much. And it looks like the center frequency is switching up and down as well. So you can see that there. All right, pull this down. Same thing for the bass. Pull this way down. Look in this lower area here, especially way down here. I'll pull it way up. You can see we're really pulling in that low end here. This is going to give you a better idea of exactly what these shapes are. We pull down that level a little more. Okay. Now watch what happens whenever I switch to our snare profile. Boom. See that difference? Huge difference, right? So there's different EQ shapes, different compression types for each of our different drums here. Go to toms, for example. Huge difference, right? Compression is way up on this by default. I'll pull that down. Go to snare. Again, different up here in the top end too. Overheads. And then room. If we look at the overheads. Look here in this area. Go to room. A little bit more of a dip in this area right here. A little bit higher up here, it looks like as well. Just a bit. So let's head back to the snare. We can see with this treble knob in this case. Pull it way up. Way up here in this area. We're really emphasizing that now. We're also dipping a bit in this area down here. You can see that there. All right, onto the bass. Pull this way up. And right here between 125 and maybe around 500, you can see we're really pulling that in for a good thwack of that snare, which of course is different. Again, on bass drum, I pull my bass way up. It's focused more here at the low end. So you can see that there, the, the extreme low end. All right, on the hi-hat, we'll run through these real quick now. You can see way up here, we're really peaking around 38 or so. And pull it down, pull it up, pull it down. You can see how we're actually affecting the frequencies there. So bass here really pulls down between 250 and again about 750 or so. Pull it way up. This whole area raises up overall. Okay. Toms, pull the compression down a bit. Treble, turn this down. Treble way up. Look at that right there. So about 2000 about 1700. We're really getting a big peak there now. Pull it down, pull it up. All right, the low end for the bass now, or for the uh, toms, pull it way up here, right down here in this area. A lot of power for toms in this area. Again, pull it down, pull it up. Overheads, just a treble on this one. Pull this down, 
pull it way up. Let me increase this a little bit just so we can hear it. You can see how it's pulling up this area right here, really pulling that up. Way up there in the top end. And then the room. Pull the treble way down, pull it way up. Even a bigger increase up here in the top end. Maybe a slight dip, maybe down there in this area. Same thing for the bass, pull it way down, pull it way up, now way down here. We're really increasing right, uh, right around 125 with a pretty wide bell. All right. So there you go. Let's turn this off and close these. So that is exactly what these Eddie Kramer drum plugins are doing with our different instruments. Again, each of our drum types have different EQ curves and different kinds and types of compression that work you know, really well with each type of drum. Now let's go ahead and finish mixing these drums. Since it's the same plugin across all of our different drum tracks, I'm just going to select my snare, come down here and shift select all of those tracks. I'm going to hold down alt and shift. That means all selected here in Pro Tools. Click my first insert right here. I can release those buttons. Multi-channel plugin, I'll just come over here to Waves right there and grab this plugin right here, Eddie Kramer DR. Select that, it's going to put that plugin now across all of those selected tracks. Okay, so we have the snare open right now. Let me just switch that to snare and I'll come through here and this is our hi-hat, put that on hi-hat. This is toms. Now what I could do for toms and what you might want to do, you could have all your toms on one track if you want to EQ and compress them the same way. I don't in this case, but it's just, you know, just sort of depends, something you might want to consider. You might want to have all of your toms, you know, recorded to one track, or you could of course put a bus on here and uh, send this out to another track, right? All three of those, right? But we're going to have separate plugins on each one. So let me just switch these up real quick. Put them all on the correct type. This is overheads. Now this, this compressed channel could be overheads or room. I think I'm gonna do room here. This I'm gonna do room here. We can always change it, of course. And this, eh, let's just go overheads for that. I'm not gonna make a huge difference. We are not gonna you know, pull much in there. So if we just play back now, immediately sounds better. I come in here, reduce, that a bit okay so let's come in here to our snare and check this out go ahead and play back solo our snare let's bypass it all right turn it back on pull up the sensitivity a bit pression down pression up i like it about maybe there effects I don't like that ringing out so much there. You hear this in context. I'm gonna come down here now. And I'm gonna come in these and just reduce some of the level on our toms so we can get a better idea just real quick here. Pull this compression down. Try that there. That's closer. Good enough for what we need here. Back to solo. Treble down, up, really cracks through the bass. Do I want a lot of power in this or do I want it to sort of crack on top? What do I want here? Well, let's hear it in context. I think that's pretty good right there. Sensitivity down a bit. Output down a bit. Bypass it. All right, on to the hi-hat. Pretty quick. So we already have hi-hat selected here. Not as many controls now. Treble, way up. I 
the bass down on this. I want it to sit on top here. Okay, let's hear it with the snare and the kick. Bypass it. Okay. Yep. That's basically all we have to do there. Pull the output down a bit. For those, I'll click, take those all off of solo. Let's go ahead to Tom 1 now. Just grab this area here and play back. Let me zoom in a bit. All right, so sensitivity up. How much do we want to compress? Pull way up. You can hear me increase this loop. Really compressed, you're going to hear it ring out. Right, pull it down. Pull it up. All right, that's way too much in this case. That's pretty good there. Let's go to treble now. We get a real good snap on this. I kind of like that sound. Maybe you don't. I kind of like it. About three, I think. Maybe five. Too much. Pull the bass out. Pull the bass in. Too much. Maybe two. Bypass it. Good power in that. Now I'll solo the other toms here. I'll just grab this full area now. All right. So the reason why I have different uh, Eddie Kramer drum plugins on each of my toms is I want to EQ them a little bit differently. I want more power in this low tom and the mid tom than I want in this uh, uh, upper tom, right? So let me head over to this mid tom now. And let's just solo just the mid tom. Bypass it. Turn it back on. Treble up. No, I don't like that. Like that there. A little more bass. Then the effects up here. Pull them way down. Way up. It's pretty good there. Come back to the Tom 1. This effect's down. Yeah, it's better there. And Tom 3 here. Just grab that. A little bit on that effects. The sensitivity. Pressed about there. More treble, maybe. Nah, I don't like that. It's not bad there. I want to hear it in context of these. I'm going to do maybe two. Too much. And then pull the bass up. A little too much on the bass. Pull the output down a bit. I can really drive this one here if I want. Nah, too much. There we go. Take that off, and we'll just grab a section here of everything. Cool. I'm gonna turn these down a little more. Try that. Very good. Turn the snare down a bit and the kick down a bit more. Okay, getting closer, not quite there. Onto the overheads, solo this. Already have overhead selected. Treble.
This I really want to live on top. Bypass it. All right, good there. And this compressed channel, I might not even use it. This on room right now. Yeah, I don't want, let me hear this. Okay. Yeah, just gonna do a little bit to that, not much at all. Pull the output down, like that, and onto the room. Already have room selected here. More natural sound, less compressed. Okay. And the compressed stereo channel here. Not using a lot of this here. Might just add a bit in, not a whole lot. I go to room. I could use any of these profiles that I want. Use the bass drum on it. Right, sounds radically different. We go with the room, compression down, bass down, treble all the way up. Bypass it. Turn it back on. There we go. Pull the output down and pull the output down here again. So I just want to barely add that in. All right. So I have a bit of clipping over here. Turn this down a bit. All right. So now it just comes down to what do you like, right? Do you like a lot of kick in your mix? I happen to like, I like a ton of kick in my mix. You might not, I do, but I guess for the sake of this, I'll lower it a little bit more. Maybe lower some in here. And let me try a more See, I like more power in the kick. All right. So now it just comes down to personal preference of, again, what do you like? So now we have a pretty good mix going on. You would, of course, you know, use some other plugins. You wanted to run some reverb, more reverb on the snare, or whatever sort of uh, effects that you might want to throw on there. But now we have a pretty good mix really quick here. Select all of these tracks there. We'll play back. I'm going to hit shift A. That's going to bypass. Let me grab this here. Bypass all of our Eddie Kramer plugins here. Playback. They're all bypassed. Shift A. Turn them all on. Huge difference. Again, bypass everything, shift A. Back on. Much clearer, much cleaner, comes right through. Kick really hits you in the face. Of course, again, that depends on you know, what you like. If you don't want the kick to hit you in the face, you might want to turn down the clicky part a little bit, right? Maybe don't compress it quite as much. Just depends on, you know, on what you uh, personally like. But I happen to like this mix right here pretty uh pretty well so now 
let's head down here. I already have these plugins on um, our master bus. And I already have them set pretty well. So right now we're going to use a little bit of this uh, G bus compressor to add some glue to everything. Okay, not a lot, but just a bit. All right, turn it on. All right, just glues it together a little bit more. Like, you know, compressing that signal there. And one thing I've noticed is my hats are a bit loud, I think. Turn those down a little bit more. A little bit more. This just depends on the kind of mix that you like. You want something that's wide open or more, you know, more direct. In this case, I want something a little more direct, less overheads, less room. All right, it's pretty good there. I, I like the kick, like I said, I like the kick a little bit high. Now, we're going to use the Abbey Road TG Mastering Chain to finish this off. So again, let's hear it. I've already set up the uh, settings here, the uh, parameters. And turn it on. Lower the output a bit. Boom. So now that that's really hitting you in the face, we're getting a lot of that low end. And the way I'm doing that here, which has nothing to do with the Eddie Kramer plugins, but we're using our, our uh, tone section here. And I have this in MS mode or mid side mode. If we flip into it here, you can see down the mid, I have a frequency center of 45 plus two with that medium shape. I go all through the uh, TG mastering chain in a I think a live video, I've explained absolutely everything about it, okay? But over here on the sides, so that, I have this really low frequency, 32, right? And I am pulling some of that out on the sides. So I'm pulling some out on the sides of that really low end and adding in a bit of low end in the middle, right? I'm adding some of that in there, right? If I pulled it out, actually, let me just bypass the whole tone section. And then turn it on, right? More power, more power down the middle, less of that really low boominess on the sides that clears things out for my cymbals and uh, you know, the higher end content. Same stuff up here in the top end for the mid, I'm pulling out right by about, you know, two and a half or so, 2.75 dB, pulling a little bit of that out while up here at the top end on the sides, I'm pulling some of that in, again, just to have things expand out a little bit, right? And for our spreader, widening things out a little bit, over here on the input, let's go back here, the input we have the EQ, the tape EQ, on the uh, side at 15. You can hear a huge difference here. Right? This setting sounds good, but that sounds a little better you know, to me, you know, once you have everything compressed, you might have to make a few, you know, a few different uh, changes there, but that's pretty good now, I think. Want a little less click in your kick, just pull it down right here. There we go. That works pretty well. All right, so again, I'm going to go shift A, bypasses all of those. That's still being run through our SSL compressor and the master uh, chain here. Then shift A, turn all of that back on. Much better. So that is your Eddie Kramer drums plugins there. Really easy, really simple to use. Really takes you from just a normal, boring sound. Again, Shift A will bypass everything. Let's go ahead and bypass uh, these as well. 
took us from that. Which is okay. It's not great, though. Took us from that really quick. You know, if I wasn't explaining everything along the way, this would take seven minutes, maybe, right? Takes us from this again to this. <laughs> 